Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's April 1st, 2015. Let's get straight into our news tonight. We'll start with something that's no laughing matter, the drought in California. And now we have the article, California imposes first ever water restrictions to deal with drought. Very serious issue indeed. But the thing that's somewhat of a joke to me is while they will impose these water restrictions on the populace in general, we've seen companies, big companies like Nestle, they'll go out there and bottle the water in California and then sell it back to Californians. So it seems like they seem to be exempt from these very restrictions that are plaguing the rest of the state while they themselves are cashing in uh, despite the record drought. So food for thought, just something to keep in mind when you uh, go and make your purchases and when you are affected by this water drought in California. And it's not just people not having the proper water for themselves, but also livestock, uh, farming equipment, uh, other things like that, trying to grow the crops and all that out there in California. Now let's switch gears and talk about some recent updates with uh, the Bergdahl situation. And now we have the report, Obama wanted to release Taliban 5 without Bergdahl in return. President Obama originally wanted to release the Taliban 5 as part of a largely one-sided exchange to empty out Guantanamo Bay, only asked for Bergdahl in return after he met with resistance from the intelligence community, according to a report cross-checked with other documents. And it goes on to say, on January 22, 2009, five months before Bergdahl found himself in Taliban captivity, President Obama signed Executive Order 13492 to launch the review and disposition of Guantanamo prisoners, including the Taliban Five. So what we see here is Mr. Obama was so eager to empty Guantanamo Bay, and I do uh, give him the proper recognition for actually trying to shut down Guantanamo Bay, but I don't think you just empty it like this jailbreak scenario, just get rid of all the guys in there and not have a prisoner swap to uh, coincide with that. So on one hand, I'm happy he's trying to shut it down, but the other hand, I don't think he's doing it exactly the proper way. And, you know, the jury's still out on Bergdahl. Many people have very strong opinions. You know, I've never been in war. I've never I've been accused of being deserters. So there's a lot of things that I'm eager to find out as this thing progresses. But for right now, uh, Bergdahl doesn't seem to be too popular with the people I know who have served in the military, and only time will tell what exactly happens to him. But talking about other Obama actions, Obama plans executive order for UN climate rules. Of course, we know the United Nations, a big proponent of the global warming narrative, also President Obama as well. And do I recognize that climates change? Yes, climates change all the time. They've changed since the beginning of history. But I also don't think that paying carbon taxes to groups and individuals like Al Gore is going to do anything to save the planet. Do I recognize we have pollution problems? I most definitely do. But you think about uh, these global warming alarmists, you don't talk about we're alarmists here, but no, when you say something like if uh, the, uh, the polar ice caps melted and then you're going to have 21 feet of water in Florida or over there in California, yeah, it's been years since those predictions have been made and thus that I know of, that has not happened. Many other examples as well, they say, well, what about all the floods and the hurricanes and the tornadoes? Uh, there have always been hurricanes and floods and tornadoes. And people would say, well, it's worse now. We have definitive proof. We have worse floods now than we've had at any other point in history. Oh, well, if you ever you know, took a look at the Bible and you saw there's a pretty big flood that you know, killed everything on the planet, minus a uh, few animals and the people on the boat. But, you know, if that's your, uh, your position on it, you're welcome to it. But I, regardless if you believe me or you believe anybody else, just don't pay these people carbon taxes. If we can agree on that, you can believe whatever else that you want to believe. We'll move on now to some drills. We've been talking about the Jade Helm drills. We've also uh, spoken about the drills that have happened in Miami, Florida. They do drills out there. Also, we've seen the zombie apocalypse training out there in California. I'm not making that up. Now, when I say the zombie apocalypse training, I don't think they're really training for a zombie apocalypse. They just made it kind of fun and trendy to get the locals to go along with it. But now we see a DHS-funded drill simulates a nuke attack on the U.S.-Mexico border. The drill, which involved numerous police and fire departments, as well as the American Red Cross and the Salvation Army, included an exercise where thousands of people were in need of decontamination and oxygen. So basically, a uh, nuke goes off on the border of U.S.-Mexico, and you have a bunch of people going over either way. And I believe uh, this particular drill simulated people coming over into our country. But we already have record number of people coming into our country without 
the new crisis. So I'm wondering how well this thing is going to be received or what training they've actually learned from dealing with all the mass influx of people coming over here for whatever reason. You know, whether they were a fleeing oppression for whatever reason, they thought they could come here and get a better job, whatever. But um, yeah, I'm just not exactly sure what exactly they're planning to accomplish with this or if they have some type of inside information. Now, do I believe that there's a nuke attack imminent? No, I do not. But, you know, if they're training for it, they definitely view it as some type of probability. So they're doing whatever they have to do to prepare for that. And let's talk about being prepared. You go to school to prepare yourself for a career. And I remember I used to get in arguments with people. And actually, uh, one of my first jobs in media back when I worked in, in Kansas, and I sit there with the sports guys, and you know, they would meet somebody. We'd just be out somewhere, you know, having dinner or whatever. And they would talk about people going from high school to the pros, you know, playing pro sports and stuff like that. And the guy, the sports guys were like, well, what's the point of going to college? You go to college to prepare yourself for the career that you want to have that's amazing and fun and all these other things. And if you can achieve that without going to college, why wouldn't you just go and do that? Well, college is such an experience. College is this, college is that. You know what's an experience? Winning the Super Bowl. You know what's an experience? Representing your team or your country in the Olympics. That's an experience not sitting around with a bunch of trendy smoking weed and playing Xbox at two in the morning. But to each his own, you do what you want to do. I went to college and luckily I left pretty much unscathed. I left college with about uh, less than $6,000 in debt. Now most people don't. Most people who get a four year degree have 20, I think the average is 29,000. I saw in a recent report, just say about $30,000 in debt. I say all that to say this, I kind of jumped ahead of myself. I want to talk about the things that you don't get in college, and that is the right to free speech. University requires students to apply for free speech permits. The public university recently required student Nicholas Tomas, who was handing out flyers, to not only get a free speech permit, but also seek approval from school officials over the content of his handouts and to restrict his activity to a campus free speech zone. And so we see these more and more often. They had a free speech zone at uh, the Bundy Ranch, also had one in Ferguson. They said, hey, you guys stand over here. We're like, well, sir, I, I can't see, you know, the tyranny that's going on down there, the, the tear gas and the rubber bullets. I'm too far away. I can't see it. Well, just stay here. So we run around back and we got down there. Got tear gas for our efforts. But regardless, you're seeing these things. Yes, you can have your free speech uh, on this public university between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. And they have to check your flyers and you know, long gone are the days where people be out there burning bras or save the whales or whatever they are trying to get their message across. Even if you don't agree with their message, you know, they have the right at a public university uh, to go out there and uh, hand out flyers and all that. But they're saying, no, uh, we're going to take your free speech from you. So I guess along with that very hefty tuition bill, you're also learning that you don't really have rights in the United States of America. And now, as I was getting ahead of myself earlier, we'll talk about the college bubble. And we have the college debt bubble is collapsing. Now 33% of all student loans are delinquent on repayments. And as I said earlier, you have the average student loan, I believe for a four year degree, being about 29, just say $30,000. And now people are realizing that, hey, you know, I went to school and I was promised all this stuff and I get out of college and even if I have a degree, I gotta go work at Cracker Barrel. And I like the food at Cracker Barrel, but you know, it's not some place you wanna work if you have a four year college degree. And we'll end tonight with this before we go into more special reports. Seven questions every college student should ask about financial aid. And this is just basic common sense stuff. Uh, one of the examples here is how much my financial aid package is loan or work steady? And things that people should know if you decide to go to college, especially if you uh, take out student loans. And I think college is great for people who want to be doctors or engineers. But, you know, things like filmmaking. I know I saw this uh, documentary documentary recently, they said at UCLA, it's easier to get in the medical program than it is to get in the film program because you have so many students that are trying to get in. It's this huge influx of people. But if you think about guys like uh, Robert Rodriguez, regardless of what you think of his <laughs> more recent films, uh, he's a guy who taught himself how to go out and shoot and he had some great films because of that. So I think that, yeah, you can go out and do this stuff on your own. Now, if you go to school, it may be easier you know, to uh, rub the elbows, get the connections and all that. But just having the willpower to go out there and do it, you can learn a lot of this stuff on your own. And myself, as well as many of the people here at work at InfoWars, we may have been uh, trained in certain aspects, but we, we also took our skills and things that we learned and went out and did it on our own to get better at perfecting the craft. So I'll leave you with that. And also, I talked to uh, Callan Diggs, 
a few weeks ago, I guess a few months ago. So you guys can go find that report on Infowars.com. We just talked about, had a real open discussion, uh, open dialogue about the college system and ways to avoid getting in these monstrous amounts of debt. So stay tuned. Coming up after this break, we'll have a special report from John Bown detailing the recent death in the Getty family and also from the vault, an Alex Jones special report detailing the emergency alert system. InfoWars Life and InfoWarsLife.com is extremely excited to announce our latest release, Winter Sun, a revolutionary type of vitamin D3. Winter Sun is a premium quality vitamin D3 nutritional supplement. It is produced by extracting oil from healthy, nutrient-dense plants known as lichens. Every batch is analyzed for purity and D3 content. It's completely free of toxins and allergens. Simply put, if you want the best at an extremely low price, this is it. Winter Sun is the result of our pursuit of the best source of vitamin D3. The research and development took over two years, but the result, as verified by independent laboratories, is the best vegan vitamin D3 product in the world. Read the facts at InfoWarsLife.com about Winter Sun Vitamin D3. Not only does vitamin D3 promote a healthy mood, but vitamin D supports our memory and brain function, something the globalists are targeting. Visit InfoWars.com today or call 888-253-3139. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Inside of the house, they located a body of a male individual, Caucasian, mid-40s, who appeared to be deceased. They contacted paramedics, LA City paramedics responded, checked the individual and confirmed that he was in fact deceased inside of the house. Andrew Getty, grandson and heir to the fortune of oil baron J. Paul Getty is dead. A law enforcement source told the LA Times that Getty was found naked from the waist down in the bathroom of his Hollywood Hills estate and appeared to have suffered from some type of blunt force trauma. It's unclear whether the injury was caused by a fall or something else. A woman found in the Los Angeles home when Getty's body was discovered by police is being questioned. The same woman, Andrew Getty, worth $2.1 billion, sought a restraining order against two weeks ago. In 1966, the Guinness Book of World Records named J. Paul Getty the world's richest private citizen. Getty's legacy as a hoarder of wealth and antiquities is unparalleled. He was so miserly it cost him his grandson's right ear when he would not pay the Italian gangsters the $17 million ransom they demanded. During the Great Depression, Getty shrewdly diversified his ownings, picking up American oil companies. Oil reserves were discovered in Saudi Arabia in 1938. Just 11 years later, J. Paul Getty plunked down $9.5 million in cash on a tract of barren land on the border of Kuwait and Saudi Arabia. $30 million and four years later, that tract was producing 16 million barrels a year. The Russian oil Goliath, Vukan, bought Getty Oil in 2000, sold it in 2011, and Getty Petroleum Oil spiraled into bankruptcy. An LA County coroner says the death appears to be from natural causes. It was originally thought to be accidental because of medication found at the scene. Why blunt force trauma? Why is a hostile woman cooperating with the LAPD? Why were there massive amounts of blood all over the crime scene? And last but not least, was Andrew Getty really murdered? John Bound for Infowars.com.
The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield formulation, fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. Well, here at a supermarket in Toledo, you can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must-have for every modern, independently-minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. This is a test of the emergency alert system. Executive Order 10,995 allows the government to seize and control the communication media. Our nation is at war against a far-reaching network of violence and hatred. Training camps have been struck, leaders eliminated, plots disrupted. And all those involved in the attempted act of terrorism must, must know you too will be held to account. Think about it. Fifteen years ago, we allowed the federal government to hardwire emergency takeover systems of all major communications and media in the United States. Now the federal government's coming out in the open and admitting what was already in their internal documents, that they're going to begin having federal break-ins over local news. If this has been an actual alert, this message would contain specific information on the watch or warning being issued. Well, it's really happening. Bonafide tyranny is coming to our shores. If you look at Egypt, you've witnessed how the government has seized control of the TV and radio stations. But in the United States, the federal government doesn't need to do that because under changes in FCC regulations over television and radio, in 1996, EAS emergency systems are put in at the radio or TV towers. They're also put in at the national and local cable systems where the federal government puts a box in at the transmission tower where they can flip a switch and shortwave towers nationwide take over those computers and put out an audio signal of whatever message they want. I am a radio broadcaster. And I remember 15 years ago when this change was made, watching the engineer at the radio station where I worked and the station manager literally freaking out. They were sent documents that the FCC said uh, were restricted, but I was allowed to look at them and I was allowed to videotape them. And I put it in my 1999 film, Police Day 2000. Well, my friends, you're looking at a FEMA control box. That's right, at 98.9 KJFKFM where I work in Austin, Texas. That, my friends, can take over the radio station. It is radio controlled by a FEMA tower. That's right, a FEMA tower in New Braunfels, Texas. It covers almost all of the central part of the state of Texas. Little teletypes come printing out of the side of the machine weekly and update us. In the past, it was voluntary. Now it's mandatory, and they can remote control take over the station. And in those, they told them that in the near future, the federal government 
would routinely seize control of their broadcast system, not during a plague or a nuclear attack or a war, but that they would seize control for routine announcements. So it was put in place, but it wasn't implemented. Now, President Barack Obama, through the FCC, has announced today that they are going to begin testing and implementing national announcements with the president giving messages to the public. Everybody has heard the National Emergency Alert System. Radio and TV stations regularly test it to make sure the public is notified in times of peril. Well, that system is overseen by the FCC. And now the agency wants to upgrade it by having presidential announcements feed into the alert system. It's also looking at how wireless broadband could also enhance EAS. But it gets worse. Eight years ago, I was not doing my radio show out of the studio. I was doing it out of a local talk station. I didn't have my own studio then. They got new communiques from the FCC telling them that they should prepare in the near future for multiple hours per day of federal break-ins over the local AM station. And the same systems and the cable systems, broadcast TV, talk radio, you name it. And I went to the station manager. And I said, please come on my show, talk about this. And he said, no, I showed you this stuff in confidence. You're not allowed to talk about it. You can say you heard about it, but not where. Now, since then, I've done shows out of another big talk station here in town. I've been a guest in many stations around the country, over 80 stations now that pick up my syndicated radio show. And in the last week, I have talked to station owners and managers who are now getting internal communiques from the FCC, and they're told it's national security, that they're not allowed to talk about it, but that there are going to be more and more government break-ins over radio and TV. Now, I got that news, but was trying to figure out what to do with it when today the big announcement comes out and the FCC Obama spokesperson lady says, oh, this is no big deal. We've always had this in place. We're now just going to implement it. Well, I guess that's true. There are executive orders to seize all transportation. There are executive orders to put every American into forced labor brigades. There are executive orders to take over all the media under nuclear attack, under continuity of government. The point is now Obama is beginning to implement this. Before 1996, you had one local station that under an emergency situation would broadcast the EAS alert. Other stations would tune to that station and carry those emergency alerts. No country in the world, not communist Russia back during the Soviet Union pre-1991, not Ceausescu's Romania, none of them had actual boxes in the radio and TV stations that would take over the entire transmission. These are wired in under regulations to the broadcast towers and at the studios. Everything by law, and I've watched the engineers complain and bitch and moan for years, has to be wired through these, and it causes all sorts of problems. They have to do weekly checks randomly where the federal government tests the, the takeover of the station to make sure it's in place. This is happening in America right as we go into a depression, right as foreign banks loot our country, right as they try to start new wars in the Middle East. Do you see what's happening? But it gets worse. FEMA began to put out press releases last year saying, you know what? We're going to have digital license plates across the country that have most wanted videos popping up. It'll be an LCD screen. And uh, we're going to give you government announcements over those. You know those billboards we put up for Amber Alerts with kidnap little kids? Now it's going to be report illegal guns, report terrorism. They're putting in these giant telescreens at these 9,000 locations, Walmarts, malls, you name it, saying, don't trust other shoppers, don't trust your neighbors, only trust Big Brother, only trust the government. Napolitano comes and inserts herself at the Super Bowl, has the TSA running checkpoints with local trained goons actually doing frisk and feeling people up. We're going into bondage. And now, in the midst of the accelerating global financial meltdown, the White House announces and says, oh, it's no big deal. We've had this on the books for years. Uh, yeah, martial law plans for years. We're going to start testing the voice of Obama, breaking in on the media. And they're announcing 
that Xbox video games and other systems are going to have government announcements that pop up. Cass Sunstein, the regulations are, has said that they want pop-ups on websites they don't agree with, with government messages. Google's already testing this where it tells you, ooh, look out going to this site. This information has been proven to be wrong. The internet kill switch, the cybersecurity takeover, it's all happening. Uh, they've got new FCC rules where all the alarm clocks and televisions have to have hardwired chips in them so they can fire your television or radio up and make you hear announcements in the middle of the night. They've also announced in this new press release that, oh, the FCC and the federal government are going to put in free national broadband that we pay for as taxpayers, but it's going to be under our filtered rules. In the free broadband in Europe at the bus and train stations, guess whose websites are censored? Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. What did Google announce two weeks ago? That they're going to start censoring and blocking out from their searches content farms like the Drudge Report and Infowars.com. That is sites that aggregate news and make comments on news. This is a full-spectrum takeover of the media in our country. This is an attack on free speech. This is literal government messages on digital billboards, at checkout counters, uh, on your license plate, on your cell phone, on your pop-up video games. This is the federal government coming in and forcing their messages directly into the media because the population doesn't buy into their propaganda anymore. There has been a continuity of agenda. This has been going on for decades. They've been setting the system up. But now they're rolling it out, and that's the message here. What does it say about our society? This is unbelievable. This is the Fairness Doctrine 2.0. This is authoritarian censorship by way of government break-ins with announcements. No country's ever done this. This is beyond 1984, and it's really happening. Do people realize the magnitude of this? And in America, supposed land of freedom, I'm getting frantic calls from station owners and managers as they're being told to get ready for all of this to happen in the last few weeks and going back eight years ago and going back 15 years ago. When I get these documents, as they put this system in place, the station owners are afraid to speak out. The station managers are afraid to speak out. Why? Why? We need to say no. This is a free market, free private property society. In the name of security, the government is hardwiring everything so they can take it over? Egypt, anybody? This is worse than what happened in Egypt. That's what Mubarak did. But he didn't have it hardwired. He physically had the army go take it over. This is as plain as the nose on my face. This is brazen, naked, hardcore, scary tyranny. And when I saw them announce this, even though I knew it was coming for all these years, it shook me to my very core, and it should shake you. When they put tyranny in place, they can take the pension funds, the veterans' death benefits, that's already begun. Uh, they can jack up taxes. They can shut down newspapers, TV, radio. The last time this happened was during the Civil War. Lincoln did similar things, arresting scores of newspaper owners and editors. This is here. The globalists have committed so many crimes. They know they're unpopular with the people. They know Congress has an 11% approval rating. And so they are moving with a system to force their propaganda onto all private media in this country. And it's going to start with little short announcements, and it's going to move until huge blocks of programming are openly taken over by the government. If we don't have free speech in the First Amendment and a free press in this country, we have nothing. The Internet has been a wonderful tool to enlighten and inform and awaken the masses. But it's also a double-edged sword created by DARPA. Electronics, computer chips are so cheap, everything is being wired for the federal takeover. This is announced. This is a fact. We are entering a time when you're not going to be able to access Infowars.com and other alternative sites. We're already being blocked all over the world. They've already got the system in place. And that's scary enough, but if they send up this trial balloon and we go along with it, they are going to implement the full takeover of the media. Whether you're liberal, conservative, libertarian, communist, socialist, it doesn't matter. Atheist, Christian, all media is under attack. We must come together and resist this. We must say no to this. This is a major canary in the coal mine. This is a full-spectrum takeover of the media. Let's not let them pull that switch. Get the word out to everybody. I have been having chills for three hours since this announcement came out. I knew the hammer was going to drop. But this is so incredible. We've got to hang together for the First Amendment, or we're surely going to hang separate. 
Thank you. The rest is up to you. Please spread the word. It is now time for radio and TV station owners to stand up to this corruption, to this police state takeover of the First Amendment and private property, and let the system know they are not going to put up with the federal government's takeover of our media system. Enough is enough. And that's it for our show tonight. Be sure to go to prisonplanet.tv. You can get yourself a free trial. See the Alex Jones Show, the nightly news, the special reports, the rants. It's all right there on prisonplanet.tv. I'm Jakari Jackson from the InfoWars Command Center, and we'll see you again tomorrow night. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.